<laughs> Originality! It seems like a four letter word in the video gaming industry nowadays, doesn't it? I mean, publishers don't want to touch a title nowadays unless they've got Roman numerals or a year off the title. But back in the early days of gaming, Britain found a way around that stumbling block, and that was mastering the subtle art of plagiarism. A technique they so refined that you'll be absolutely amazed what they got away with. So come with me as I take on a journey of a very British guide to gaming ripoffs. <laughs> Of course this is nothing new. It's always been happening since the beginning of gaming. So we'll begin with an easy one. The arcade classic Burger Time. For those of you who have never played it, Burger Time basically involved an overweight chef trampling over disproportionate burgers in a bid to compete in a never ending barrage of orders. What you'd actually want to eat in a place with such a low regard for hygiene is beyond me. But then again, choosing to go to a restaurant where the kitchen is populated by oversized killer fried eggs and hot dogs, and with some fat bloke trample over your food would be the least of your concerns. But murderous consumables didn't deter Ocean Software in 1984 for completely bastardising the game with their own release, Mr. Wimpy. Admittedly, Ocean were pretty clever at disguising the stench of plagiarism by slapping a British fast food chain's mascot on the cover. But I'm sure Wimpy Restaurants Limited weren't too pleased that their customers know that not only were they letting their staff trample over food to complete orders, but also serve them completely raw burgers covered in whatever the fuck that pink stuff's supposed to be on top. Oh, an ocean, little tip. I'm sorry to tell you this, but tagging a crap one level minigame on the front of the title ain't gonna fool anyone into thinking it's original. Twat. But Mr. Wimpy's a license. A lack of creativity pretty much goes hand in hand in that department. Some developers don't have the luxury of a huge franchise to fall back on, so they have to resort to other methods to hide their blatant plagiarism. Like masking it with all out racism! Take Elite's 1986 slugfest Frank Bruno's Boxing, for example. A game that so blatantly rips off the Punch-Out arcade game, they couldn't even be asked to change Bearhugger's sprite. Let's call him Canadian Crusher. Yeah, nice going, guys. I'm sure no one will notice it's him now. Yeah, that's okay, that's acceptable. But straight after the first round of sprite ripping, they then start slapping on the stereotyping. First of all is Andrea Punchaderov. You guessed it, a complete rip-off of Soda Popinski. Or Vodka Drunkinski, depending on which version you're playing. Some stereotyping there, yes. But not too bad. But then comes Dragon Chan. A bad enough name to begin with. But then Elite decide it's nowhere near offensive enough and decide to rename him Fling Long Chop. After that though, they go completely batshit insane by calling the Australian boxer Antipodean and Andy a slur from the 1800s. The African boxer gets a comedic bone through his nose and call him Tribal Trouble, and then they lose all creativity with their blatant racism whatsoever and name the final boss Frenchy France. I mean, for fuck's sake! And yes, that is a theme tuned to Rocky playing in the background, it's the game's theme. So as if they weren't trying to piss off Nintendo's lawyers enough, they might as well get on United Artists' tits as well. But again, just because it was a title that spawned from Little Island the Atlantic Ocean, it completely went under the radar. And whilst Punch-Out isn't exactly one of Nintendo's AAA titles, there's one franchise in their repertoire you don't want to fuck around with. Now don't worry, I'm not going to insult your intelligence by going on about how great Super Mario was. Oh, it's groundbreaking, blah 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 blah. You've already heard it a million times before. But back in 1987, German developers Rainbow Arts saw how popular the game was doing, and decided to approach Nintendo for a license with a demo they made of it for the Commodore 64, in a bid to make home ports of Super Mario. The big N obviously said no, so Rainbow Arts thought, fuck it, and made the game anyway. Hoping no one would notice they blatantly just knocked off one of the greatest games in history, they tactically replaced the Mario Brothers with the Gianna sisters. The Goombas with owls. Yes, owls. And Bowser with a flying dragon. Thus, the great Gianna sisters was born. But were Rainbow Arts satisfied they just ripped off one of the greatest games in history and were about to make a packet? Oh no 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 no. They sold the game to one of the biggest British publishers of the time, US Gold, who launched a mass marketing campaign to procure how superior the great Gianna sisters were over the Super Mario Brothers. Even going as fast as slap, the brothers are history all over their ads. 
<laughs> of course Nintendo weren't going to have any of this, and after just two weeks of sale, it was pulled off shelves. Even cancelling the Spectrum port due out a week later. Suffice to say, because of their actions, this game goes for phenomenal amounts of money on auction websites, if you're ever lucky enough to find an original box copy, and is also the second most pirated game of all time. It's a shame not too many got to experience this game, as plagiarism aside, it was actually a pretty decent game. But it seems after all these years Nintendo has forgiven the Gianna sisters, as a DS port is due out sometime later this year. So there's a good end to this tale after all. So what have we learnt from today's episode, apart from the fact we want to blatantly rip something off and get away with it, release it in the UK? It's that the gaming industry relies on evolution, rather than revolution. But I'll leave you with this thought. If there was no such thing as plagiarism, would innovation ever exist either? Of course it bloody would! <laughs>